Okay, in today's Retro Bat setup guide, we are checking out the world of DOS gaming and how to get you up and running with your DOS game collection. I'm going to be going through CPU settings to get you the best results for your DOS games. I'm going to be going through video settings in actually how to control your games and lots of other useful information, including virtual keyboards. If you want DOS gaming through Retro Bat, check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, before I start today's DOS in Retrobat setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And before asking me in the comments section, can you do this, can you do that, check out my Retrobat playlist, it's very likely I've already covered it. So we're looking at MS-DOS today, and this is one I've been meaning to do for some time, and people have asked me for this over time too. So first of all, what I'm going to suggest doing is go into your Retrobat shortcut, right click, open file location, and we're going to open up Batch UI. If you don't see Batch UI or it doesn't open, then follow my guide on fixing that, which is also in my playlist. Now Windows protected your PC, if you should get this, just go to more info, we're going to run it anyway. Okay, so we've got system list, and at the top here, MU station system file needs to be put to ES systems. We're going to go to system. From here, if we just drop this down, we're going to find DOS. Now, under extensions just here, it's going to give us various different extensions. The one really you need is .zip, which tells us that your DOS games need to be in .zip file extension. They need to be zip files unextracted as they are. And we're also going to be using DOSBox Pure, which is a RetroWatch core, which is already inside a RetroBat. So what we're going to do then is actually start putting in a few games into the RetroBat directory, into the ROMs folder. In the ROMs folder, you're going to find a DOS folder here. Now, I've got a few games here, which I've selected for reasons that different games in DOS needs different settings once we're inside a retro bat. So I've got DOS games here, and they're pretty much from different eras, and there's a reason for that. So I've got Alien Trilogy, which is in .zip, Bustamove.zip, Cable.zip, RiskyWoods.zip. So here we go, we got Cable, which is obviously a 1980s game. Risky Woods is a 1990s standard 2D platformer type game. Bust and Move and Alien Trilogy around the mid 90s. So different eras for DOS games. So I'm going to pop those into my ROMs DOS folder and we're going to open up RetroBat. Okay, so we're going to see IBM and that's Good, so that's what we need. So if we go into IBM, first of all, let's scrape some artworks. So I'm going to press on my start button, main menu, scraper, and I'm going to go to scrape now. And we're now scraping the artwork for our games. And once it's uh, scraping is finished, we're going to go to game settings, update game list, and press on yes. Okay, so we've got the artwork for our games and some preview videos. So what we're going to do next is I'll press the equivalent of the select button and I'm using an Xbox Bluetooth controller for this. If I press on that button, I'm going to come to view options. From here, we're going to go to advanced system options. Now, emulator, I seriously recommend keeping this to the Retro DOSBox Pure. It's the easiest way and it's not too complicated. Next up, we're going to take a look at emulation which is at the bottom. Now under emulation, I find that changing CPU cycles is the best bet to get your games running at the correct speeds. DOSBox games and DOS games are gonna be from different eras, like I say, so most of the time, if you leave CPU cycles on auto, your games won't necessarily boot, or they might be too fast, or they might be too slow. So there's a little bit of work involved in this, and you need to find out, you need to identify which machine each game was pretty much made for the era. So for example, uh, Risky Woods 386. If we come out of here, I'm also finding that by going to controls, 
and keeping gamepad auto mapping onto on seems to work fine. So let's just boot up Risky Woods. Now, as you can see, it works fine. The sound isn't so great. So again, if we go to view options, advanced system options, if we just go down to audio, you then got the task of finding out which audio settings work best for each game. So for example, sound blaster type, I've got this set to game blaster. If I put this to another sound blaster type or even put it to auto, you'll find that your sound either gets worse or gets better. You've also got sound blaster settings and let's just remember that Sound Blaster was a sound card for old style PCs and DOS PCs. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna go for Cable. Now, again, this is made in a different era of DOS world of games. So advanced system options. And for this game, if I leave this on CPU cycles to auto and boot up the game, You're going to find just by leaving it to auto, it goes lightning fast and you don't even get time to see the options. So in that case, what we need to do then for the game cable is go to advanced system options again. And we're going to go back down to emulation and change over the CPU cycles. And for cable, for example, uh, this game I find works best running at 386 PC or whatever. And I find this works better under 386 20 megahertz. This is going to slow the game down and it's also going to give us the chance to configure controllers within the game. If I open this up again, As we can see there, cable was running perfectly to the point where we can actually see the options menu and select joystick. Uh, so something else I need to make you aware of, sometimes when you're booting up DOS games, you might come across a little screen where you've got the choice between selecting .x's, .bats. Now normally in that case when that happens, if you establish which one of the X's actually takes you into the game, Whilst that option is highlighted, if you press right on your D-pad, it will say auto start. And once you select that, the next time you boot up the game, you will no longer see that menu. And another thing to mention, whilst you are on that menu, at the bottom right hand side, you can also find controller mapping. But we can also do that whilst we're in the game itself. So next up, I'm going to show you Alien Trilogy. And obviously Alien Trilogy was a very popular game in the 90s, it came out on everything in uh, DOS also got a version of it. So again, just like the other games for Alien Trilogy, it's just a case of advanced system options, emulation, and CPU cycles. And I find games of this era, uh, 94, 95, maybe 96, uh, PC-wise, they were running a lot of them on Pentium 100 megahertz. So I'm going to select Pentium 100 megahertz at 77,000 CPS. And if I open up this game,
And something else to mention, whilst you're in the game, you can also access a virtual keyboard. I'm pressing down on my left analog stick, so clicking it down. This is going to bring up virtual menu. From here, if you go to Pad Mapper, and your left analog stick is going to be controlling all this, you can actually go to Preset at the top, which we can obviously use presets for our controllers or you can actually map it out yourself. So for example, this game says keyboard up. So in other words, if I press up on my keyboard, page up, uh, that's gonna act as in uh, my character in the game is gonna respond to the up key. But we can actually edit this like it says, just by pressing A on my Xbox controller, I can go down to joystick and then simply, now that's as pressing up on my D-pad is then going to respond rather than uh, keyboard pressing. So we can get a little bit irritating after a couple of minutes of doing this. And as we can see, by changing the CPU cycle and actually mapping out the controller, the game is now working fine, even though I've got a Xenomorph covering my face. And let's not forget, we also got video settings. So if we go to advanced system options, just like most other systems running through RetroArch on RetroBat, we got shader sets, decorations. If we go to decorations, by default, it's gonna have default unglazed on, which has got the sides rather than black bars on the sides. If we turn this to none, I'm then gonna go to game aspect ratio and put this to full. Other things we've got here is vertical sync. If I put this to yes, that's gonna take away screen tear if you're playing 3D games. Visual rendering, we can enable smooth games by linear filtering by putting this on. We've got video filters. Uh, for example, we can add scan lines to this game. Now let's just try out Alien Trilogy again with these new settings. So that's it for today's Retrobat and MS-DOS gaming setup guide. There's a lot of information in that video, but eventually you'll get the hang of it. Just remember that if a game runs too slow or runs too fast, just change those CPU cycles around and establish which one works best. Another really good way of establishing uh, the era and the computer most suitable for that particular game you want to run, is just do a Google search and find out what type of computer works best for that game. Uh, also remember you've got virtual keyboard to open up by pressing on your left analog stick or that works in my case. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And also remember, I'm not a retro bat channel. I cover lots of different emulation systems here on my channel, Just Jamie, and even standalones in countdown videos. Join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro. <laughs>